Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Today, just in the beginning, we find ourselves in the creative world because I want to show you what we're going to build today. I want to get started building the coolest mining slash forestry equipment machinery that I can possibly come up with. And I decided to have a take on a gear system with a clutch, three gears and a reverse. As you can see from all the equipment around, it, it took me a while to figure this out. There are not a lot of videos on vanilla gears. The gear design I took from Iru the engineer. Unfortunately, he doesn't make any more videos and he never explained how his contraptions really work. So I tried to figure something out myself and this is what I came up with so far. Why don't we go ahead and get this machinery started? Just give it a second and it's gonna start gearing up. The way this works, if you interlock a small gear with a larger gear, the larger gear is gonna spin faster. Then you make another small gear on top of the large gear, interlocked with an additional large gear that is gonna spin even faster. This is how we get the three speeds. Speed one right there, speed two, speed three, and this is gonna be the reverse. I programmed it in a way that if I shut down the machine, it's gonna automatically go into reverse. So only the reverse gear is still spinning. If I turn on the machine, then the reverse gear doesn't really matter. This piston right here is the clutch and these three pistons are the different gears. The first gear doesn't have a piston because it's already at the beginning and then three pistons for two additional gears and one reverse. All of these pistons have their own controller. If I enable the clutch, you can see it's gonna interlock with the first gear and therefore taking over the momentum. Of course, we want to use the clutch again to disengage. Then we want to go into the second gear and disengage the clutch again. And here we are at the second speed. Same thing with the third gear. We want to engage the clutch, switch into the gear and disengage the clutch again. And there we go. We are at the third speed. Uh oh. Okay, I have to admit the third gear might be a little bit quick for uh, comfort, but it's working for the most part. Let's disengage this again. We're gonna go into reverse, but for that of course we would have to shut down the motor first and then let the reverse gear do its thing. Disengage the clutch and there we go, we're in reverse. In order to make this stable, you want to make sure that you build it in one continuous frame. And this is why I had to make this swing arm. I would assume it's called. I'm actually not 100% sure. But check this out. Let's go into the first gear. You can see the swing arm is like so. If I hit the button, everything is still connected, but it can freely swing around and leave the pistons enough room. Hit the next gear, does the same thing. And then for the reverse, we have turned the swing arm 180 degrees. We can also turn it back again, 180 degrees, and now it's straight. Easy peasy. I would say that's enough for the showcase. What I would like to accomplish today in survival is to build the engine bay. So at least this gear system, maybe including the clutch, as well as the swing arm if we have enough time. See ya back in survival. Okay, we are back and as you can see, I already failed at that one time. Let's try it again. I already set up a pillar that is attached to the world. We have a switch hooked up to a controller that I'm gonna use in order to help me build this stuff. Now, I don't have enough space in my inventory, but don't worry, we're gonna rebuild everything. The first thing I want to make sure I have is an attachment point to the frame we're building. So this top part here where the controller is currently is where we are gonna attach the rest of the car. My gear system is gonna be attached right here into this direction and we want to have enough space, at least two spaces before we set up the corner. For the corner, I want something like that so we can also build down and maybe strengthen the frame with a second level. Let's set up our first gear system. We have to think in it in units of two, so there's always gonna be a small gear attached to a large gear. Let's start by building the small gear first. We're gonna need a six-way pipe right there and then we want to attach the angled pipes. In order to make this a bit easier, I'm gonna hook it up to the controller so it doesn't wobble around all the time. So there we go. Want to set up a couple of these pipes all facing into the direction of the gear system and then we want to take the thicker pipes right there in order to complete the small gear design. We then want to continue this without a bearing and immediately after that we want to attach the large gear design. That's also starting with a six lane pipes but then we want to go straight into all directions. Just like that we then want to take two angled pipes coming towards us twice. Do this for all four sides just like so and then to wrap it up we want to take our T pieces 
and place them approximately exactly like so. Nice. Now, of course, this is not going to make anything faster if we don't have more teeth. We're going to need eight teeth instead of just the four. So that's where we need another bearing. This one I'm also going to attach to the controller and I'm going to set an angle of 45 degrees. This is going to make the next step substantially easier because we already have the 45 degree angle. We can take our straight pipes and just make more teeth. To make them really grip, we have to do something similar than before, just two angled pipes to round it off. Once we've done this for all four sides, we are done with the first wheel pair. And this is actually also the one that I'm gonna hook up to the machinery. So this first bearing is gonna do all the work. And the way we set this up is simply with 360 degrees in a loop. And we can keep this at a slow speed. There we go. The gear is turning. Let's shut it off for the time being so we can continue building. We want to have a gap of two pipes and then do maybe another T intersection. Yeah, let's do a T1. Uh, no, I want it facing just like that. Here is where we're going to set up the next gear. But this time it's going to be a big gear and after that a small gear. So the large gear design T intersection. Let's hook it up to keep it stable. Want to have a pipe in all directions. When I have some pipes angled in just like that and now in this case it's actually convenient if we release the bearing. Let's do this pipe first at the T pieces as well and then if we release the connection this is going to turn and allow us to build the rest. Honestly I'm not sure why this is still turning. This is hooked up to the switch and it is shut off so <laughs> maybe some of the collisions are causing issues. Anyway so let's do the rest of the wheel. Want to set this to a 45 degree angle etc etc. You get the gist. Okay looks like this became already too glitchy to be attached to the ground. What I'm gonna do is remove the lowest tile right there. We're actually gonna put it up on a lift this time. And you can now see how everything glitches into each other and that is gonna disappear as soon as we release it from the lift again. So instead what I'm going to do temporarily is just set something up so it keeps stable on the ground. There we go. That is hopefully going to do the trick. Beautiful. Just a little tip on the side. If you ever need to reattach one of the gears, just let it run. And then you can go ahead and attach it very easily actually. Let's grab this corner and then we just have to wait for the opportune moment. And there we go. Now let's actually see. Can we stop it? Is it going to stop? Please stop. Okay. Only attach a big gear to a small gear and not vice versa. So these two are connected. But if we attach a small gear here, this shouldn't be connected. Let's get another six way. I should still have one. That's going to go right here. And it looks as though we might actually have to make some adjustments. Let's see. Corner towards us. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Then we want to attach the thick pipe pieces. Should technically be possible. Come on. Turn. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it looks like I need to give this a little more space. The big gear needs to go out one more small pipe. Let's try to achieve that by taking apart this pipe here. Oh, please give me the right target. Yes. So instead, we're going to attach two pipes and then weld this thing together again. Can we get this started and weld in the right moment? Cool. That's much better. So now I'm going to attach another big gear to this, a small gear to this, etc, etc, until we have three gears plus one reverse. The reverse, of course, is going to be handled a little bit differently, but more to that in just a second. All right, we are back and as promised, I finished the gearbox system. We have the reverse gear right there. It is actually hooked up to a different bearing. Oh, hold on. That's the wrong one. This shouldn't be hooked up here. This should be hooked up right there and going into the other direction. So this one is turning like so. Actually, we should test it out maybe. You know, at the moment, the gear shaft right here is just one continuous piece and it's slowly wobbling out of control. In order to fix that, we want to put it up on the lift and putting it up on the lift is a necessity. This way everything is straight and hooked up as intended. So what we want to do is approach this guy right here and now we are able to connect it. On the other side, I just took a T connection. So I'm also going to use that and I want to make sure these two guys are welded together. And now this should have gotten rid of the wobbliness quite immediately. Let's also connect it up with the other side here. There we go. Put this together and this is already connected automatically, which is a good sign. That means we have a frame all the way around. I also left some intersections so we can make some type of a wireframe with the pipes. 
and that hopefully should be good. Let's release it from the lift. Great. Okay, now we should be able to turn this on. Oh, no. Ah, I think I have to make the other thing less wobbly as well. So back on the lift you go. And this is actually why I have this intersection here, this pipe. We want to hook that up to the gear system as well. Gonna have an additional bearing here so the gear system can turn freely. And then we're gonna attach it here. Make sure this is all welded together. Okay, that actually doesn't look bad. We have the first gear, second gear, third gear. Now we can play around with the speeds a little bit. Maybe we can speed this up. Let's try speed 2. Okay, not bad. Nothing bad actually happens. We're gonna try speed 4. Yeah, I'm guessing this is probably gonna be my limit. Speed 4. I mean, it is pretty fast. Uh, we should also program in the reverse. Though at the moment I don't really know where all the logic is gonna go. But I'm gonna be happy if we accomplish a finished gearbox, including a clutch, by the end of today's episode. It doesn't have to be a completed vehicle. I wonder if we could compact the design by actually making this the third gear and the reverse gear at the same time. If I attach a bearing right there and just put it into reverse, it's still gonna run forward if we don't use it. Huh, I think that is a really good idea. Let's cut this off right there. We can save on a lot of materials this way. Just gonna replace this pipe, add a bearing where there was none before. Then we're gonna attach this right here. Thankfully it got unstuck with no problems. We're gonna attach this bearing and now while we are not in reverse and not using the bearing, it is gonna drive forward. Okay, wonderful. Everything welded together again. Let's release it from the lift. That means we should be able to get rid of the metal on the floor and just complete it by finishing the frame. There we go, now we have the gearbox on its own frame. I'm gonna leave enough space so we can actually make the clutch and also the gear shifter that is then gonna be attached to the drive shaft. But the drive shaft is definitely a topic for another day. I continued the frame on the top and decided this is the place where I wanna start with my controllers. I have a level 4 controller here that is gonna make sure to keep the 45 degree angles between most of the bearings. I think this is actually helping the game so it doesn't have to do everything with the collisions. Uh, hopefully I'm not gonna run into too many issues doing that. Naturally right now everything is messed up. Hopefully that is gonna fix it. Oh no, don't do this to me. Oh, this doesn't look good. Uh, maybe we remove the controller again. Okay. Well, I guess I've had better ideas. In this case, we're gonna go with a level 3 controller. So I can have my speed limit right there. And we also have four bearings, even though we actually only need one. This first one right there. We're also gonna hook this up to our switch right away. And this hopefully is gonna be our final position. Let's set this to 360 in a loop and see if it still functions. Yes, like a charm, except, yeah, the second bearing right there, of course, needs to be hooked up, the reverse gear, though that would have to be a different controller. Gonna leave this a little bit of space and set up another controller here. This one is hooked up to the bearing that is supposed to go into reverse direction. We'll have to find out which direction that is gonna be, but also in a loop. And we also wanna dedicate a switch to that. Ah, of course, it needs to be 0 degrees and then 360. There we go. Now only this gear is turning, of course, very slowly, but we mostly don't want to go backwards. That's just in case of emergency. All right, cool. I would say with that out of the way, we have our gearbox finished. It's now time to tend to the clutch and I'm actually willing to do this right here. So maybe right here we could have another T intersection instead of a straight. I have a feeling this spot is going to be a little bit better. This is still hooked up, so now we can just build out and down. We will have a piston facing down, that is gonna be the clutch, so we can actually go beneath the gears. Then we can push the entire drive shaft forward and just stop at the gear we want to interact with, and that should decide our speed, hopefully. <laughs> so if we take a little turn, like so, yeah, we can actually spice things up a bit with different pipes, and now I'm gonna need pistons. Unfortunately, I only found two so far, but that shall hopefully suffice. Now, oh, this might be a problem. Maybe I'm too far to the right now. I guess we have no choice uh, but to test it. We're gonna go down one, and then I need to go into both directions. Though I need to be able to take over the rotation. And we also need to go back a little bit, so we have the space for three pistons. Oh, that's gonna be a nightmare. 
Man, I have to think long and hard about this, but I think I came up with a solution. I want to come back up here. So we're actually coming from behind. And now turning around here, we should be able to make another one of these gears. But I'm going to need a six-way. And of course, we want to attach a bearing first, six-way. And then we should be able to do all the things, you know? So you go there and you go there and then maybe take it off the lift so we can do the rest. I want to attach these pipes as well. I guess one way to deal with that would be to hook it up to a controller and then just raise the piston a bit. And now we can place these guys, no problem. Reset the piston again and see if it interlocks. That looks good, if you ask me. So the only thing from this arm that's missing is two pistons, right? In order to push them to the other gears. Let me go ahead and put this up on a lift and we are actually gonna cut it right there. Instead we want to go back a little bit and prepare the two pistons. Now they need to push the entire contraption forward. Hmm, I wonder, is a T-intersection gonna be enough? And then I can set up my piston here. So one is gonna go there and then the neck... Ah, okay, this can only be a curve. Because the two pistons need to be individual from each other. So that's gonna go there. And then we are gonna have a piston. And now we need to find a way to connect it to the next piston without interfering with anything else. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, technically that shouldn't be too hard. If I just do that, I can go straight here, then take a curve, take a curve down. I need more tubes! Just like that. And then this is where the next piston is gonna go that I still have to craft. There we go. Second piston goes right there. Add a straight and then one down. And now I should be able to weld this up again, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, something is fishy. Is this really what I want? Yeah, something is definitely wrong. This should curve into the other direction. I want to have my drive shaft directly beneath the gears. That and attach, attach, attach. Come on. Yes. Brilliant. Good. This here is going to be our drive shaft. We can clearly see that I built the pistons in the way. I need to bring this up here, then go down. So I just need to bring this entire contraption one block down. I have to dive deep into the trick bag. I have to say, right now I'm considering suspensions in order to be able to attach this frame to the main frame with another piston, making it more stable. Let's hope it works. In order to connect this, we probably want to set up a piston. So we're going to need hmm, T-junction. You're going to go right there. Then we want another piston in here. And that means when the other pistons push, there should hopefully be enough play. I hope the pistons work like that. Okay, got my piston right here. It's going to be attached to this block. And then I would like... Oh no, this is not possible... Maybe it will be possible if I set up a bearing here and then connect this like so. Yes, okay, that actually connected perfectly, which means we should also test it out. For now, I'm just gonna put it on long legs. Of course, this is not gonna remain like this. I guess that's the best way to showcase it. We first wanna know whether or not it still turns. Yes, it turns almost perfectly. Well, I... Ah, maybe the suspensions are messing it up now. No suspensions it is then. Let's set up a quick controller in order to test this out. This piston is what I want to control. I need another switch. You go right there. That is gonna be the clutch. So all we want to do is go down one block. That should be enough. I know, I remember. This is why I needed the suspension so I can actually go down one block with this piston. <laughs> Uh, stop, stop, stop. Come on. Don't do this to me. Okay, should be an easy fix. Just, uh, yeah, I can reattach that. Come on, right there. Then piston, and I want to attach the curve in the end. The problem is uh, this gear interlock has to be so exact that I cannot deal with the error margin of suspensions. This means we have to come up with something else in order to stabilize this clutch arm. Let me go ahead and come up with something that's gonna work. All right, guys, we are back and this project is really finicky, I have to say. I have tried many, many things and I don't even know how to explain it to you. This is gonna be our drive shaft, so this is the thing that's rotating where we're gonna give some power to our wheels. 
After some testing I decided to go with a reverse gear once again. So now we have all the separate gears. If we look at it from this side this is reverse then one, two and uh, three right there. Therefore we also have three piston right here in order to be able to expand. Then I have two pistons in order to be able to use the clutch and I also have this suspension on the swing arm to help out with that. You can also see the swing arm just goes below that in order to help navigate the piston arm so that it doesn't wobble around too much. The problem comes with the gears. I already know how to fix that but it's just way too late to do that now. All of these bearings allow this entire shaft to wobble and stretch a bit and that is actually causing an issue with the rotation. It needs to be very perfect and stable and in order to achieve that my suggestion would be to always have a sidebar helping out with the stabilization. So we wouldn't need a bar in between a small and a large gear but if there is a large gear following a small gear right here we would have to offset the entire gear and add a sidebar in order to make this less wobbly. Anyhow I can still show you the functionality. <laughs> oh, that got me a couple of times. We have a whole bunch of buttons and switches. The first button is actually the clutch. So if I use that the entire thingamabob goes down there. The number three button is the reverse gear. I thought I'm just gonna use a button in order to do that. So if we disengage the clutch again you can see the gears are interlocking and the drive shaft is rotating. I can then use number 4, 5 and 6 in order to expand the piston and set the different gears. Finally number 2 would be to enable the machine. Once it gets rolling it is rolling so that is good. Then disengage the clutch and we are driving forward very very slowly as you can see in the back there. If I want to drive a bit faster, clutch, then we are gonna disengage either 6, 5 or 4. It doesn't really matter, it's always the same distance. And we can see we have now a more decent speed. Of course, it's still slow. Guys, it's all about the concept. I just love the engineering part about scrap mechanic. And just imagine what we can do with these sorts of systems. Then finally, let's do the max speed. Put this down again and hopefully this is gonna pick up. This is usually where it gets into a little bit of an issue. And that is not because I built it imperfect. That is simply because too many imperfect collisions. So we can see this entire bar floating around, wobbling everywhere and we can easily prevent that. So I'm actually going to do that in between the episodes. I'm still going to call this a success. It took me a long time to figure this out but I'm glad I had my attempt at it. So first gear and second gear are working perfectly. If I add the sidebars in order to stabilize everything I bet you this is going to be much more successful. Still a pretty nifty project I would say. I'm going to polish this in between the episodes and then maybe the next time we can make this useful. Now considering the size this is probably go into a huge truck. So imagine this is going to be the engine bay of a truck. For my other vehicles I'm probably going to go with piston engines which we can have a look at the next time as well. But we're probably going to spend our time with base building. I need to get some things done. Cool with that out of the way thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.